What's up, everybody? It's Jordan, and welcome to the Sports Suit Hind Show. And on today's episode, I have a very special guest. He's played with the St. Louis Cardinals, the New York Yankees, the Atlanta Braves, the Toronto Blue Jays, and the Cubs. And he also won the World Series with the St. Louis Cardinals in 2011. I have uh, Jaime Garcia on the show. Thanks so much for joining the show, Jaime. Uh, thank you so much, Jordan, for having me. It's an honor. Thank you. Yeah, I'm really excited to um, have you on the show. So we'll go ahead and uh, get started here. Uh, what age did you first start playing baseball? I uh, started playing baseball about uh, when I was four or five years old. Uh, were there any other uh, sports you played uh, aside from baseball? No, no, it was just baseball. Um, I, I, it was my, my dad's dream, and he loved baseball so much. So ever since I started playing, I, I wasn't allowed to play other sports. So it was baseball. So uh, growing up, who are some of your favorite uh, sports teams and athletes? Um, uh, growing up, my sports teams will be the Dodgers. And the reason why, Fernando Valenzuela, left-handed pitcher from out of Mexico, he was, uh, he was the biggest star that we've ever had in, in baseball, and he was the big star back then. So uh, it was a big inspiration for me, a uh, role model, for sure. Uh, so up until the point you were drafted, was there ever a moment where you maybe considered to quit playing baseball? Was that always your dream? Uh, it was never my dream. Uh, actually, to play baseball was never my dream. I... Um, you know, we, we're not going to get too much into details, but I, I grew up in a lot of a lot of shame, a lot of fear environment. So baseball was my only escape. Uh, I needed baseball to be accepted, and and I developed this this relentless mentality and discipline because I I I needed to play baseball. I needed to be good at baseball in order to be whatever. And um, to answer your question, I I had everything going against me, nothing going for me. I uh, came to the states when I was in high school and. I was fortunate enough to go to uh, high school in the States, in Texas, and the injuries in my arm, which for the people that had followed a little bit of my career know that I had three major surgeries, and I went through a lot. I started when I was actually 12 years old, um, very young age, and they did not, they did not stop until I got done with, uh, with my career, which it was a year and a half ago. So that's so, really cool. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. No, I was saying to 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 say your question to answer your question is I never really spent time on whether I was gonna make it or not or what the deal was. It was I was just I was going all in, man, all the time. I was nonstop going all in, and you know it worked out. It's really cool you were able to defeat the odds and in a not so good situation. And then in 2005, you were be able, you were drafted by the St. Louis Cardinals. What was it like to be drafted by such a historic uh, franchise like the St. Louis Cardinals? Uh, it was – it's hard. I, I mean, I, I wish I could say, you know, it was just amazing and uh, just this amazing feeling. I loved it. Everything was great, but it wasn't. It really wasn't. Uh, There's was a lot of mixed emotions for me. Um, like I said, the injuries were already going on in my arm, and – the the anxiety was through the roof. Everything was just out of control. And I don't know, man. I just never, you know, both last questions you've asked me, I never really sat down and thought about what's going on and how does it feel. I just, I was going nonstop all the time. So got drafted and I said, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to go all in. I need to, I need to play in the major leagues. I got drafted in the 30th round. I got injuries going for me. I'm I'm out of shape. I'm overweight. I don't speak English. Um, my arm hurts, but I'm going. So I think in a way that helped me to, to just simplify things and get after the things that I can control when, you know, things things happen. And uh, you've mentioned your injuries, and you retired just a little over a year and a half ago. Was there over a moment where you maybe considered retiring before you were even called up to the major leagues? Uh, never, never. I, I didn't consider retirement until I got done. Um, through this whole journey of, of my career, I developed this, like I said, this discipline and relentless mentality to, to overcome uh, pain and fear. And it just kept going. So I got my, my character was built through the really difficult times. And um, um, 
also my faith, my faith, man. I'm a man of faith and I'm, I'm a, a truly follower, believer in Jesus Christ. And once I understood and I uh, found my identity in Christ, uh, I became, I mean, if I was unstoppable before this uh, foundation, I became even more stoppable. So uh, all of a sudden things just weren't about me. You know, it, it was about a greater purpose, about a, an identity and, and I had developed so much sweat equity throughout my life, not just career, my life that I was not going to stop. And, and, and now I was, I was going, doing it for a higher purpose. And I, I understood my identity. I understood my purpose in life. I understood my vision of the person that I wanted to become, which is exactly who I am today. And I went for it. So retirement was not an option. Uh, when it happened, people think that it happened because of the injuries, but it didn't happen because of the injuries. I, the injuries were there the whole, the whole time. It's just because it was the time to do it. And uh, when I said, I'm, I'm, I'm done, um, I have not looked back since then. I don't miss my career at all. Everything stayed there and just really enjoying uh, life. Uh, so I mentioned in the minor leagues, you were in the minor leagues for a couple of years. What were some things that you learned in the minor leagues that you believe helped you throughout your major league career? Um, I, like I said, man, the main thing with me, uh, I wish I could be your normal, you know, the normal person that talks about pitching mechanics and I developed it. But the biggest thing with me, it was resiliency. It was just, uh, I developed so much uh, discipline and character and, and relentless uh, mentality to just always showing up and I, I would always be the first one to show up and I would work extremely hard and I learned how to handle and deal with pain. You know, that was the biggest thing because the pain did not stop, like I said before. And I, I just learned to go all in and, and s to simplify things and not really look, uh, stop and, and make excuses and look at outside of the things that were in my control. I had no time for that. So I developed this, this vision of saying, I, I want to be I'm going to be in the big leagues and I don't care what I have to do. I'm going to be there. And once I got there, I'm like, I'm going to stay here. So that vision always kind of kept going. And I, I, I kept going, going, going and everything looking back on my career in my life, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, I'm, I'm exactly the, where I wanted to be. And I'm exactly the person that I wanted to become. Uh, yeah. Some people, uh, some players, I mean, they didn't really take too much for granted in the minor leagues. They might not be there for a long time, but the minor leagues can really, help players throughout their career. And on uh, July 11th, 2008, you made your uh, major league debut. What was it like um, making your major league debut that you finally made it in the big leagues? Uh, I, again, man, not, not a lot of time to, to enjoy it. Not a lot of times to think about my emotions and what I was feeling and thinking. Uh, I, already, I already needed a big time surgery in my arm and, and I was just going to go as far as I could and for as long as I could without having the surgery. And uh, I was struggling with a lot of anxiety and depression as well. So never really a lot of time to enjoy it and to spend time on, on really processing in the whole thing. I think it became enjoyable for my family more than it did for myself. In uh, 2010, your rookie season, you made a, a huge impact for the uh, St. Louis Cardinals. You had 13 wins your rookie year, and you were actually third in rookie of the year uh, voting that season. What was it like? Uh, being nominated for such a uh, prestigious award like Rookie of the Year? Again, same thing, same answer. I didn't really have time to spend on that. I should have won the, uh, the Rookie of the Year. I should have been on the Cy Young uh, conversation. I wasn't because, because the injury happened. Now, my, my elbow was coming back from elbow, but then I injured my shoulder. I didn't tell anybody. I kept pitching like that. So no time to enjoy, no time to process. I just, I was nonstop going and, and trying to overcome my injury in the shoulder. And it was like that the whole career. Yeah, you had 13 uh, wins that season. And then the following year, 2011, you also had 13 wins as well. But uh, that year, you were able to win the World Series with the St. Louis Cardinals. What was it like playing in the World Series? And what was it like winning a championship? Same thing, man. Same thing. Like I said, I'm not your normal, the normal person. I, I, I a lot of injuries going on out there. Uh, I think that the, the biggest thing that I remember that year is not so much the ring that I have, not so much holding on the trophy, but is the relationships with the people that I made there. There's some of them are still my brothers, and I still, I'm, I'm still in touch with them. And we had a great atmosphere, chemistry, you know, a lot of uh, people of of character, of faith that. Um, 
that, uh, that definitely marked my life and my spiritual life and the person that I am today. So that's, that's the biggest thing that I remember, obviously looking back and, you know, the fact that I was fortunate enough to, to win a world series, to start two games in a world series, to start the greatest game in world series history, which is game six for the St. Louis Cardinals, one of the greatest of all time. Uh, I'm just so blessed, man. I've been extremely blessed and God has blessed me so much. God has been so good to me, positioned me and placed me in places where, where only by his hand, I, I, uh, I could have ended up being there, but I'm, 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 for me, um, it's just being the biggest thing is just develop that willingness to do whatever it takes, whatever needs to be done, whatever is required. And that really just opened up doors for me in places that I never imagined. Uh, you've talked about your teammates and you're talking about, uh, you're a man of faith. You all, you, during your time with St. Louis, you played with uh, starting pitcher Adam Wainwright, and he's obviously a man of faith and an outspoken Christian. What was it like playing with uh, Adam Wainwright? He's, he's, he's the best, man. He's one, of my, he's one of my brothers in Christ. He's one of my mentors. He's one of my uh, dearest friends. And, you know, I'm just so blessed that I got an opportunity to, to play alongside him. Uh, not only a great person, great human being, but also a great competitor that – I got to learn a lot from uh, beyond the faith and, and baseball and, you know, somebody that I, that I uh, admire, respect, and, you know, just so blessed that I had that, uh, uh, that opportunity. Yeah. Wayne Wright, he's been injured some of the past several years, but if it wasn't for injuries, he could potentially be a hall of famer, but what was it like playing with a uh, future hall of famer, uh, Yadier Molina? What was he like playing with and how was he like as a teammate as well? You know, he's, he's, you, you said it, <laughs> he's future hall of famer. He's, uh, if not the, the greatest, but one of the greatest of all time. And he's a man, you know, he's nobody does it like Yachty. And I think people that follow baseball know, know that can see it. And it's just somebody that, uh, that takes his work really serious. And he, he's extremely, um, a disciplined, hard worker guy. And, and somebody that I got to learn so much from somebody that, that again, just so blessed, man. The guy placed me there. And a lot of people talk about me being injured my whole career and also still having the, the success that I had, even though I was injured. And a lot had to do with having the greatest catcher of all time. Uh, he made things better and he, we always worked through things. And he was the best at reading me and, and, and making me better. Uh, so give him a lot of credit and, and it's just uh, give him a lot of credit, but it's just an opportunity to play alongside him Wainwright, Chris Carpenter, Lance Berkman, uh, to me, the greatest hitter of all time, Albert Pujols, who's, you know, I, I got to play with with guys that Carlos Beltran that are some Hall of Famers and some borderline Hall of Famers that I got to learn. Uh, I couldn't have asked for, for, a better, for a better career, man, and a better uh, outcome and just better places to be at at the right moment. Yeah, Molina's definitely a future Hall of Famer, definitely the best catcher of the past decade or so. You mentioned Bullhouse, definitely one of the best hitters in all time. And if he plays a couple more seasons, could potentially have the uh, home run record. But in 2016 to 2018, you were with six teams. Has it ever become frustrated at how often you were being uh, dealt in trades? No, no. I, I By then, I had developed an, an, an unbelievable uh unbelievable just passion relentless mentality a vision like i said before a purpose it was beyond jaime garcia uh identity i just became unstoppable man and and i really not i was never i was not gonna allow the outside noise circumstances to to affect me on the inside at this point, I was already committed to the platform that God had given me, which was extremely unique. And I was going to go all in, regardless of the team where I was. I knew that I wanted to play those two more years. And I believe that, that me playing with the Yankees opened up doors for a lot of other things. And, you know, and, and, and the fact that I was able to pitch or, or make three starts in a row with three different teams, being the only pitcher in over 100 years – uh, it just opens doors for, for people to really listen to what God did in my life. And, and, and it just what, what that relentless mentality and what that willingness to do whatever and, and to handle pain and just keep going, what that can do and how that, opened, that opens up doors for us. 
Uh, you mentioned uh, Pujols and Molina, and you've played with so many great players, but who are some players that you played with that you believe were underrated and never really received the credit that they deserved? Um, well, I think – let's see, let's see. Uh, one of them, Matt Holiday, is one of my closest friends too. He had an amazing career. Uh, somebody that I, I admire, uh, love and Christ and somebody that I have a lot of respect for. And I, I believe he had an amazing career, just an amazing person that, uh, may not be as talked about as much as other guys, maybe because he really wasn't into, you know, the right time he got injured. I remember that 2011 world series. And then the next one, just little things that popped up, but, uh, but he just had an amazing career as well. Yeah, I was looking at Matt Holiday's stats not too long ago, actually, and I believe for his career, he bat 299 or 300, right about that. Has a very, very underrated career and uh, should definitely be considered in the Hall of Fame in the future. And you've, uh, throughout your career, you played a decade in the major leagues and you've pitched against some great hitters. Um, was there ever, who was, who would you say was the most difficult uh, batter to pitch against? Um, well, it changed, it changed throughout my career. Obviously, if I had to pick one, I mean, I was, I was fortunate enough to play, to pay, uh, to face Manny Ramirez at the end of his career. I think he's one of the greatest. Obviously, I faced Aldo Pujols when he was with the Angels. Uh, to me, he's the greatest, uh, not only because, not only because I got to know him, uh, I know the, the person that he is, the character that he has, um, but also what he did, man, for 11 years straight in St. Louis, nobody's ever going to do that again. You know, people may say whatever about whoever you want to name, but nobody is ever going to do what he did for 11 years in St. Louis. You know, the, the, those numbers that he put up, it's unbelievable. What he continues to do over year after year, it's unbelievable. Uh, so I would say him. He's, he's obviously the greatest hitter that I've ever faced, right? Uh, but – to go a little bit more in details as far as the, the toughest out for me, uh, I would say that at the beginning of my career, somebody like um, – somebody like – let's see. Mm, maybe Joey Bottle. You know, Joey Bottle, another – Another guy that was – I had some success against him. He had some success against me. But he's going to go down as one of the, the greatest hitters of our era. I uh, got to face him a lot in Cincinnati. And then towards the end of my career, uh, somebody that we saw this World Series was really good. And, and to me, he was the reason why the Dodgers won is Mookie Betts. So I got to face him a bunch there with the Red Sox uh, and the Yankees and then with the Blue Jays. And he, this guy is, is unreal. To me, he's – you know, no no – to not take everything off um, Mike Trout because I did, obviously I didn't have to face him a lot or I didn't – yeah, I didn't play against him as much as I did against Smoothie Betts towards the end. Uh, to me, he's, he's, he's the greatest player in the league right now, just overall, and he changes a team as we saw for the Dodgers. I mean, he's the reason why they won. So I would say those, those three guys, you know, Oliver Pujols is the greatest hitter. Joey Bottle, uh, earlier in my career, just a tough out. Just a, it, it was fun to play against him. And then Mookie Best towards the end. Yeah, I'm actually a uh, Cincinnati Reds fan. And Votto has been amazing the past decade for the Reds. And he'll definitely be a future Hall of Famer, one of the better hitters the past decade. And he's, it seems like he's always able to get walks because of a pitcher. I mean, they know what he's capable of. They might just walk him instead. Um, great, great player. And uh, you spent a decade in the majors, like I mentioned. And throughout your career, what would you say your favorite play was throughout your entire uh, MLB career? That was my what? Uh, what would you say was your favorite play that you made throughout your major league career? Favorite play? What do you mean yeah. play? Like favorite game? Mm -hmm. Favorite play? Like what? Maybe like a home run or you struck okay. out with somebody. Something okay. like that. Um, I would say... Um, the greatest one, man, I have so many, I was, I was blessed that I pitched so many great games against great teams and great lineups. But if I had to pay one, I had to pick one, it would be, um, 
it would be out number 21 against the best lineup in baseball in 2011 in the game two of the World Series. Uh, against the lineup with the, the Rangers, they had, to me, the best by far lineup in baseball. Uh, they were they were on fire that year. I was coming from injuries, and I was fortunate and blessed enough to where Tony La Russa gave me the ball for game number two. And here it was, out 21 in the seventh inning, giving up two hits, no runs against the best team in baseball. We're winning one nothing, and when that when when um, Lance Berkman ca- caught that ball in the in, in right field, and I was walking towards the dugout, I would say that's the greatest one. Uh, like I said, I have other games where I, I had a perfect game going into the eighth inning with two outs or going into the, uh, yeah, in the eighth inning with two outs. And then that was another amazing thing. And I had some some uh, one hit chat outs that I pitched, from really big games. And then you can also talk about my grand slam at Dodger Stadium, but my last start ever in uh, in the National League. That's another great highlight. I mean, it's just a lot of things to pop up, but if it was one, one moment, one pitch, it, it would be out 21 against the, the Rangers. Yeah, playing in the World Series, I mean, that's just an honor to do. Not many people get to play in the World Series. And you mentioned your grand slam. It was with the Braves, and I believe that was one of your last games you played with Atlanta. And it's, it's really crazy because, I mean, pitchers don't really hit home runs often. And grand slams are not really hit often. The fact that you hit a grand slam is just really crazy. I saw the video, and I thought it was a different Jaime Garcia because, I mean, you just really don't see pitchers uh, hitting grand slams. An amazing, amazing play that you made there. Yeah, yeah, no, I – to, to answer your question, to uh, to uh, correct you a little, little bit, it was actually my, my last start ever in not only with the Braves but in the National League. So after that, I got traded to the Twins, and then I got traded to the Yankees, and then the following year, I was with the Blue Jays and Cubs, and the bullpen with the Cubs. So that was that was it, man. That was now it wasn't my last at bat, but it was my last start in the National League. Uh, I had a couple of at bats here and there with the Yankees and the with the uh, uh, the Blue Jays. That's uh, it's really really interesting. So these are just some uh, rapid fire questions. Uh, who would you say was the funniest teammate that you ever had? Funniest teammate that I've ever had was Lance Berkman, one of the sneaky, really funny, borderline Hall of Fame. Uh, I'm actually going to um, – he's he's one of my dearest friends too, somebody that I respect a lot. I still t- stay in touch, a brother in Christ, and somebody that I was so blessed that I, I was able to connect, but he's extremely funny. Uh, what would you say is your favorite movie? Favorite movie, I would say uh, – I'm a movie guy. I, I love movie, man. I've grown a lot, and I've, I've, um, I have a passion for movie. A lot of my – movies, a lot of my growth and personal development came, came through movies, watching videos. So there's so many good movies that I like. But if I had to pick one that had the biggest impact in my life, I would say um, – War Room. Um, I've my mom and dad have seen that movie. I've yet to see it, but I heard it was a very, very uh, good movie. Uh, what would you say is but your also favorite? War Room, but also uh, um, Overcomer, the latest movie they came out with. Same people love those movies, man. I think more people should watch those and kids, and especially I mean, you watch Facing the Giants for Courageous. All their five, six movies they have. Great family movies that that go beyond just watching a movie. They teach us a lot in in, in life. Yeah, I've seen uh, Courageous. It, it was a uh, very, very uh, good movie. Uh, what would you say is your favorite meal to eat? Favorite meal to eat? Uh, I love breakfast food, man. I eat breakfast so much and um, love eggs, scrambled eggs. I love uh, meat, just ribeyes and bison meat and ground beef and bacon, things like that. I, I love I love avocado. Uh, I eat pretty healthy, but I, I eat a lot of high, good fats. So I, I actually do love, it went from, okay, I got to eat these things to where now I love them. So um, my favorite breakfast, uh, favorite meal, if I had to pick one, it would be just some kind of bacon or ground meat or something and, and some eggs and avocado and then some almond butters and berries, things like that. I, I love that with some black coffee. 
Uh, what would you say is your favorite TV show? Favorite TV show? I don't. I don't have some. Uh, I'm actually not a movie person, man. I I learned to just. I, I've been reading a lot. Spend a lot of time meditating, praying. Spend time a lot of time with family, which I love. Um, just my priorities have changed a little bit. I don't watch a lot of TV and uh, j just. Yeah, I don't. I don't have a TV show. Uh, you mentioned uh, books. Do you have a favorite book you'd like to read? The Bible. The Bible is my favorite book, man. I, that's where I get all my wisdom. That's where I get my. It, it's a. It's a way of living. You know. That's where I, I transform my mind, my character, and Jesus Christ is the the greatest leader of all time. So I spend a lot of time uh, reading and getting to know two of the greatest leaders that have ever walked this this earth, and one of them is the Apostle Paul which I read his 13 letters. I read through the Bible in the last four years. And the other one is Jesus Christ. So I, I learn a lot from them every day. And I, I, I read the Bible every day, I have my devotional. And, you know, I also have a lot of other books like uh, Purpose Driven Life, The Four Agreements, a lot about personal development, that I, books that I like. But, but once you read the Bible and you understand it and you get a hold of the whole story that God created, you understand and you realize that every single book about personal development comes from the Bible. So my book is, is the Bible and it's uh, it's my manual of living, my example of living. And I don't start my day before um, reading my Bible. Uh, throughout, I mean, you've pitched a ton. Obviously, you're a pitcher. Was there a favorite uh, pitch you like to throw in games? Uh, it, it changed. It changed throughout my career. It, it uh it went from being the uh, curveball to I was always adapting and changing and, and to different surgeries, different injuries. So it, it went from, like I said, a, a fastball, and then I developed a, a two-seam fastball, and then I the curveball, and then it, I learned a slider, and then I learned the changeup. So it was always it was always something different. And I think one of the biggest things that I've learned in my career was the power of adaptability. And always adapting and working with what you have and not, not waiting to get what you had in the past. But it's like looking at the moment in the present and, okay, you already have thoracic outlet surgery. They removed their first rib. I got a lot of issues going on. Okay, what can we do with what we have right now? And like I said, I never had that one pitch. It was always a different, a different pitch depending on, on the stage where I was at. Uh, so the final question is, if you were never a baseball player, what would you have liked to have been? Never thought about it. Never crossed my mind. I never spent any time thinking on plan B, which I believe that's key for anybody that wants to accomplish anything in this world. Uh, that You have to be fully committed. But being the person that I am today, obviously that I'm not playing baseball and I never loved baseball, if I had to pick something, it would it would for sure back then be something that had nothing to do with audiences and, and people and speaking somebody, something that I would just isolate myself, that I would be an outcast and keep to myself and I don't have to deal with people. That's where I was back then. But with the, uh, uh, the amazing thing about that is that I'm actually doing that. Anything that I did not want back then, that's exactly what I'm doing now. I've conquered all my fears and I'm using this platform that God has given me uh, the best way possible, and he just continues to surprise me every day. Uh, so, can you tell some of the uh, listeners where they can follow you on social media? Can you what? Uh, can you tell some of the listeners where they can follow you on social media? Uh, where they can follow me? Yeah, yeah. I mean, this this whole again, this whole social media thing is new for me, man. And I I don't really spend a lot of time on my phone. I don't I, I don't really I think what I try to get people to do is to get away from social media a little bit. Uh, and if you're going to follow me, my goal is that you do listen to any of my videos or anything that I share is for you to, to develop the, the, uh, um, the self-control and develop the, the, to where you can control social media and it doesn't control you. That's my goal. I don't want people to just come follow me and, and be on social media all the time, seeing what I'm going to, I'm going to post. Um, but, but I am going to be more involved. Uh, doing some stuff like this, sharing some videos, some some revelation and some some wisdom and whatever that God has given me. Uh, they can follow me on this account that I'm connected on, which is Jaime Garcia Official. 
uh, on Instagram. And then I'm, I'm, I got somebody working on, I wrote a book, so that, that should be coming up next year. And then um, I'm going to have a website and, and things like that, that people can go and, and, you know, learn a little bit more about myself and think, you know, learn about the book and uh, things that can get involved. But, uh, but yeah, on, on this Instagram, it's mine. I'm a Garcia official. It just started not too long ago. And, and they, they know that it's, it's for sure me, even though it doesn't have the blue check mark. Uh, there you have it, uh, Jaime Garcia. Make sure to go follow him on Instagram. Uh, thank you all so much for listening. If you could like this video and subscribe to my channel, I would greatly appreciate it. And I will see you next time on the Sports Dude Hind Show.